Hello, everybody, and here we go with genetics. Why is that? There we go. Here we go with genetics. Okay. Um, so, a lot of the things in this screencast will hopefully be review. Um, shouldn't be anything that's too crazy or out of the common way. A um, couple of new terms, but overall, hopefully, this is going to be review. So, let's get started. Um, we're going to talk about inheritance. Inheritance is the process by which traits of organisms are passed on to their offspring, okay? And this is done genetically, okay? So a lot of times you get, you look just like your mother, you look just like your grandfather, you act just like your father. Um, all those traits that your parents have um, can be passed down to you through inheritance. Um, and so we're looking, again, the physical basis of inheritance, okay? And the physical basis of inheritance is what these traits are or what they are represented by, um, which is the gene, okay? And um, so uh, you can hear us talk about traits a lot. Mendel studied different traits in pea plants. He studied um, seed color, flower color, plant height. Okay, so saying this, uh, a trait is basically the saying the same thing as a gene. Okay, and we're going to get into um, what a gene is, which you should know. Okay, um, gene is a small segment of your DNA. Okay, so the physical basis of inheritance is, of course, your DNA. Um, so genes are sequences of nucleotides at specific locations on chromosomes, okay? So a chromosome can have many, many genes located on it, and each one is going to be in a different spot along the chromosome, okay? Um, if you remember, the uh, um, definition for gene that I wanted you guys to know is a unit of heritable genetic information, so a unit of heredity that encodes information needed to produce proteins. Those proteins in turn make up cells and build an entire organism, okay? Um, genes comprise short segments of DNA. They can be a few hundred to many thousands of nucleotides, so I suppose sometimes a long segment of DNA in length. Um, but most importantly, I want you to know that each chromosome can have many genes on it. It's not just one gene, one chromosome. It's one chromosome has many, many genes, and those genes have all different locations, um, and that's they're called a locus or plural loci. Okay, and the locus is where the gene is located on the chromosome. It's going to be a nice diagram at the end that'll hopefully clear this up. All right. Um, so now some review. Homologous chromosomes are similar but not identical. So they have they're the same size, same length, same centromere position, but they also have the same genes with the same characteristics. Uh, the gene for eye color, the gene for hair color, whatever, are all in the same location on homologous chromosomes. Okay. So again, the genes for the same characteristic, talk about hair color. Um, is found at the same loci on both of the homologous pair, okay? So both homologous chromosomes, right? Now, the genes for the same characteristic, like the gene for hair color that is found on both homologous chromosomes may not be identical. They may be slightly different versions of a gene, okay? It's not like everybody has the exact same color of hair. There are different versions of hair. There's blonde hair, red hair, brown hair, black hair, auburn hair, okay, strawberry blonde, a bunch of different kinds of versions of that gene. And these alternative versions are called alleles, okay? So there can be two different alleles of a gene, there can be five different alleles of a gene, there can be a lot of different versions of a gene, but it's still the same gene, and they're found at the same location on the homologous chromosomes. So how do we get these alleles? How do we get different versions of genes? Um, and that is basically through mutations. So mutations are how we get alleles, these different versions of the genes. Um, 
a, a mutation, if you recall, is a change in the nucleotide sequence. And these changes arise during DNA replication in S phase. That was pretty illegible, DNA replication in S phase. Um, as the DNA is being copied. And we'll talk more about the mechanism of mutation when we talk about DNA replication in the next chapter. Um, but for now, just know that that's how we get a mutation. Um, if the mutation occurs in one of the sex cells that's going to become a gamete, a sperm or an egg, then that mutation can therefore be passed on to the offspring okay, of that individual. Um, most mutations that occur usually occur in the reproductive cells. And then that, that passes a different version on it. And if you remember, this is one of the sources of genetic diversity or genetic variation that we care about. Okay. All right. So now you have two alleles of every gene in your genome, okay? One on each um, of the pair of homologous chromosomes. So each cell carries two alleles per characteristic or per gene, one on each of the two homologous chromosomes, okay? And now we're gonna start to get a little bit of terminology in. If the homologous chromosomes carry the same copy of the gene, the same allele, that organism is called homozygous for that gene. Homo means the same. Okay. If the two homologous chromosomes carry different alleles at that gene, okay, the organism is considered to be heterozygous. Heterozygous um, means different, or rather just hetero. Oop, bleh. Hetero, I didn't mean to write zygous apparently. What does that word zygous sound like though? Zygous, zygous, anyone? Oh, zygote, yes, it does sound like zygote now, doesn't it? Hmm. Let's file that away for later because, of course, it has something to do with the zygote. Okay. Um, where am I? Ah, blah. Okay, moving on. Um, and so here we have a nice little diagram. Here's a pair of homologous chromosomes. Um, this is the one from your dad. Your dad. This is the one from your mom. Okay, and you'll see they're the same length, they'd have the same centromere position, and they have the same genes, okay? So here's a gene right here, here's another gene right here, and a third gene right here. And they're just showing a couple. There are still many, many, many different genes on each chromosome. We're just showing you three of the perhaps thousands that are on each chromosome, okay? If the chromosomes carry the same allele of the gene at, uh, at this locus, the organism is homozygous, okay? Uh, and again here, there's this other, the second locus has a different gene, uh, two copies of the same allele. So again, they're homozygous at this locus as well for that gene. Then for the third gene, um, the two homologous chromosomes carries a different allele, okay? And that would make the organism heterozygous for that gene. So when we talk about homozygous versus heterozygous, we're talking about each particular gene because you can be homozygous for one gene and heterozygous for another gene and then heterozygous for a third gene, homozygous on the fourth gene. So it's a situation that's unique to each gene. You can't just say an organism is homozygous because they're not homozygous for every single gene. You have over 25,000 genes. Um, and the odds of you being homozygous for every gene is pretty small. Okay. Um, and I think for today, that is all. The end. <laughs>